Hi, my name is Christy Carrolls and I am a Core Solutions Engineer with McAfee. Today we're looking at Envision Cloud, our CASB solution, and specifically we'll be working around uh, Office 365 and how we can control data loss and provide, DL provide DLP capabilities uh, in real time utilizing Lightning Link uh, in Office 365, OneDrive, uh, and the blocking of real-time file sharing. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is go into our OneDrive and from here I'm going to upload a file uh, that contains credit card numbers. Uh, what this test is going to do is we are basically doing a simple test using credit card numbers as a data identifier and we'll go look at the DLP policies uh, in a few minutes. First thing we'll do is drag and drop this file into OneDrive You'll notice that the file has been uploaded into OneDrive. We'll now notice that in near real time a remediation action has taken place and that it was changed from a Word document into a PDF. This, because, this is because this policy was violated and a uh, new document was put in its place letting us know that this file was quarantined. We can go in and we can check the user's email that's linked to this account and we will see that we now have an email letting us know that we have a quarantine specifically around this file for 10 unique credit card numbers in the wild and action had been taken to quarantine this file. What we can do now is go into our MVision dashboard and we can actually go and look at uh, the incidents, uh, policy incidents specifically around this file and see how it was violated. From there we'll go and we'll take a look at the policy that was violated. You'll notice right here 10 unique credit card numbers. When we click on it we can see that it specifically violated the 0365 number 1-1 policy. Uh, this is a very simple test but it shows how quick and easy Sky High can help block data from being moved when it shouldn't be. So let's go ahead and look at some of these DLP policies and some of the other things we'll be looking at in reference to providing um, data loss prevention in the cloud. So here are the policies that we'll be working with today. You'll notice we have a number of them for AWS and we'll get to them in a later demonstration. Um, but here are the Office 365 ones that we're talking about. Again, we just went through the basic credit card rule. We'll be looking at an on-demand scan next and then a number of other uh, O365 use cases to provide protection while uh, your data is in the cloud. So uh, the next one that we're going to do actually requires uh, a different account. Um, so let me minimize this screen. We'll open up my Firefox and uh, we'll notice that I am in a dashboard. I'm a different user. Um, but what we're going to do here is we are going to show how um, a on-demand scan can run on a host and we'll see that there are uh, bad files in this uh, item. So we've actually logged into OneDrive and if we look at the on-demand scan folder, uh, we'll take a look at the policy in a minute, but you'll see that there are a number of uh, different files in here that look like they could possibly um, violate uh, a rule, right? So we see things such as customers for processing 25 records. We could probably open these up and look at these records. Let's go look. This is a real file. We'll see it has things such as uh, numbers in there. Uh, we've got user information. Uh, looks like it has zip codes, addresses, and even social security numbers, which is probably something we shouldn't be um, moving around on the internet. That being said, Let's go ahead and go back into our uh, Envision Cloud and we're going to look at some of the DLP policies. So let's scroll down. We'll look at the Office 365 on demand scan and we'll look at this item. We'll see that it is an active policy and the items that it is looking for are credit card numbers, uh, which probably is something we don't want to have in there. Um, and then also uh, 15 or more equals a high incident. And then user one specifically is who it's calling out for this. And so um, here's the rest of the information. It is uh, a active rule. 
So what we can do is we can actually go and look at the incidents for policy incidents and go ahead and look at one of the events from this on-demand scan. So now that we're looking at the incidents for our on-demand scans, what we can actually do is we have to filter down. Let's uh, filter down specifically onto the on-demand scans. There are 480 of them. And we'll notice that when I scroll up, we can see AWS credit cards. If we scroll down, we can specifically limit this to OneDrive. And here it is, uh, user one, this is what it looks like. The incident was allowed, but it has been tagged as an incident. So we're able to then go and take action on this or even uh, look into this a little bit more to see if something needs to take place in reference to this on-demand scan. So that's another easy way that we can uh, apply a DLP policy to already uh, uploaded data and to scan specific uh, O365 uh, OneDrive uh, folders as well. I'll minimize out of this user and then next we'll be looking at uh, how structured fingerprinting helps reduce false positives as well. So I'll go back into my standard dashboard within O365, I'm sorry, within Envision Cloud uh, for the next use case. Okay, so now um, we are going to open up OneDrive and what we're going to do here is we are going to drag and drop a couple files um, to show uh, the ability of how st structured fingerprinting helps reduce the false positives. What this demo, show demo shows is how Envision Cloud can help index um, a source file and then use the context to identify columns within the table, so that structured data itself. Uh, let's go over, we've got some structured data files. We are going to drag and drop these into OneDrive. Now there's two files that we just dropped. As you've noticed, one of them was called structure fingerprint negative, and one of them is a structured fingerprint positive. The positive file has the requirements to trigger the DLP policy uh, 0365 number 1-3, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, and they both have last name and social security numbers in them. So the negative file is the same, but the credit card numbers have been removed Therefore, it's not meeting that specific DLP criteria. You'll notice in uh, real time, uh, the positive file is now uh, a PDF. It was a, a CSV before. If we click on this, we're going to see that it has been deleted because that's what the policy states in reference to um, that structured data and what was in that uh, file. So uh, we will also notice if we go over to my inbox, that we received an email in reference to a delete notification. If we click on this, it lets us know that specifically the structured fingerprint positive that was uploaded uh, was deleted because it violates a company security policy. So let's go ahead and go back into the Envision Cloud dashboard. Let's go ahead and look at the um, policy incidents. And as this loads, you'll notice we're still looking at our saved view of the OneDrive policy incidents. And directly at the top, we'll see uh, the files from me. Um, I structured fingerprint positive, two of them, and remember because they both had information in them and the negative one did too. But you'll notice that the positive is a high um, severity specifically because of the type of data that was in it. And when we come over here, we can look to show that it was violating the 1-3 uh, rule for O365. Um, it's a high severity because of these two items. It's the basic credit card rule as well as the structured fingerprinting rule. So it provides us a, the ability to look into structured data into those columns to determine if there is sensitive data inside of those files. So another good way for us to be able to um, make sure that data does not leave when we don't want it to. All right, 
So we can go ahead and actually uh, look at the top of the incident summary. And here's another good way for us to view it. It shows us um, total incidents generated. And this is an easy way for us to drill down into just those high incidents if we want. So we can start looking a little bit more into uh, how we can remediate or even just work with the users who are causing these problems. So um, another good way for us to view specifically around just those high severity incidents and this is directly from the OneDrive of the service name. Let's go back to our main dashboard. And the next item is we're going to talk about preventing collaboration of sensitive data. So we're going to show the power of lightning link. If we remember, Lightning Link is near real time ability to catch items based on rules. Um, and this is specifically around collaboration attempts um, to uh, stop that collaboration. So when there's a very small window of being able to send something out of the environment, we want to be able to do this in near real time. So uh, let's go ahead and look at our policies. So we have DLP policies. And we are going to go back down to our O365. And so here we have uh, Skylink. We just looked at the structured data and the DLP classification. Whoops. We will be looking at the second set of use cases. So uh, via the Lightning Link collaboration controls through Skylink and then some other blocking of sharing. Like we said, when we have that very small window of being able to block data from moving forward. So we're going to open up OneDrive again. We're going to change files to documents with classifications. And we're going to grab, whoop, we're going to grab these four files and we are going to drag and drop them into OneDrive. And you'll notice here are our files. So let's go ahead and go back into Envision Cloud dashboard and look at some of the incidents. We'll look at the incident summary. And you'll notice, great, we have uh, tagged a couple other rules. So here's our Skylink collaboration, um, tagging of these specific files. Um, and the reason why we want them to be tagged is we want to be able to take action on these files specifically of not being able to share um, files with others. So specifically outside of our organization, such as maybe a Gmail user. So what this does is it provides us the ability to stop a file from being sent out um, before it actually gets out, right? Which is a nice thing that we want to be able to do. So let's go back to OneDrive. So now we're going to share the file restricted. So let's go ahead and click on that file. We're going to click share. We're going to send it to it's one of my personal addresses. Let's go ahead and click in and save this. And uh, let's go ahead and say send. Now it says the link to restricted was sent, uh, but based on how Lightning Link works, uh, it will send a link to that email. So let's go ahead and minimize this, open up my personal email. And you'll see that uh, Christy Carroll's sent me a restricted file. And let's go ahead and uh, open it. And I'm going to type in my name. Click next. And notice that the link has been removed uh, because of the fact that there was an issue with the file. It's a DLP. So in near real time, it blocked me from being able to go and download or get to the files that were being shared with me because I was outside the organization and I violated a DLP policy. So a really cool way of us being able to um, stop, throwing, uh, stop files from being shared outside the organization, even in the cloud. We can actually go and look at our incidents. Notice we have uh, 168 of those incidents. And right here is collaboration controls um, blocking access to a shared file. So we restricted uh, the restricted dash CJK 
and it was based on the fact that it met that DLP policy, uh, Lightning Link Collaborative Control. So another great way that we are able to utilize DLP uh, to block data from being shared outside of our um, our location. So hopefully these use cases have been helpful to you in uh, realizing how we're able to put restrictions on DLP and blocking files from leaving the environment.